Jesus. We'll bless your name at all times. Your praise will continually be in our mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
and in his love is what protects you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Where you may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. Heart my enthusiasm. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. Amen. Oh, when trouble rises, I get excited because God is about to do something. Hall 
little children's church. They got stations back there. It's like you didn't miss. I said, oh, I missed coming in. I'm going to go to the bathroom first. You can go on in there and drop your can in the bag. Box uh, on your way. We got all three locations for you. And three locations, amen, for you to drop your can. Amen. We thank God for Miss Chantal. She thought of that idea. I said, that's a good idea. And so we implore you to be sure when you go out to a shop or whatever, pick up a bag of candy and uh, bring it for the children. Amen. So we thank God for that. Now, also for children's ministry, Vacation Bible School is coming up in June. And we have a training. Come on, yeah, you can go. We have the best Vacation Bible School. Amen. And so we have training every year. And the next training is going to be March uh, 28th from 830 uh, to 12 noon. It's going to be in Summerall, Mississippi. So the cost is $20 per person. That's the early bird uh, registration. Now, if you wait past uh, Wednesday, you have to pay a little bit more. So we, we want not just children workers to sign up, but we want volunteers to help out at Children's Church. We have volunteers. I thank God for Miss Sandra. She helps out at the registration table every year. Amen. Praise God. So join her at the registration table or where you can uh, be an escort for children to their different stations. We need all of your help from youth also to adults. Amen. So that's $20 per person. Miss Chantal, you want more information? See her. Miss Chantal, raise your hand. Amen. There she is over there in the corner. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for her. Amen. Let me tell you, children workers, ooh, God, they, I tell you, they're going to get an extra star in heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And um, last, no, not last, but uh, we want you to use, uh, you know, as we have um, the uh, coronavirus, you know, they, it's uh, permeating out of society, but I don't want you to be afraid. Amen. No fear here. Amen. Amen. But you, just because you're covered by the blood of Jesus, come on now, I'm going to use common sense attached with spiritual sins. That don't mean you don't wash your hands. Come on now. Come on, but get anything just get from that moment to your contact. That's a good speech. Wash your hands. Amen. Wash your hands and hug as much as possible. Now, uh, uh, Brother Anderson here. Come up here, Brother Anderson. This is how we shook hands this morning. Come on, give me a little music. Come on. Come on. Logan says, 
No fear here. We're going to declare that. Put that declaration out there. Say it three times. No fear here. No fear here. No fear here. Hallelujah. We don't have any fear. Hallelujah. Psalms 27 verse 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hallelujah. Verse stanza 13 says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Somebody say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? No one.
another word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we just thank you right now, Father God, for your Holy Spirit right now, Father God. We thank you right now, Father God, for your protection, Father God, for your love, for your mercy that covers us and guides us, Father God. Now, Father God, that we go forth in your word, Father God, speak to us, Father God, that we may go forth in the power that you have given us, Father God. And we just thank you for your word on today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Feeling good this morning. Hallelujah. How are y'all feeling good this morning? Glory to God. Glory to God. In spite of what's going on, we can still have joy. Amen. We can still have joy. And right now, this this week, we call it spring break. Amen. And, and, and if I got any educators in here, just raise your hand. They are in here. Amen. And they are so excited for spring break. Praise the Lord. They jumping on their feet. Praise God. Praise God. But we just thank God for this this week being spring break, we said we, 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 we sprung forward today. We, we, we changed the time, amen, amen. But but today, I want to talk to you on the subject today because there's a lot going on right now, amen. There's a lot going on, but praise God, when you know who is in control, you have no need to fear, amen. So I'm going to talk to you just for a few moments today from the subject of no fear here. No fear here. So just look to your neighbor and say, no fear here. Look at somebody else and say, no fear here. Amen. Because sometimes things try to come against you and they try to put you in the spirit of fear. Amen. But one thing I found out is you just trust God. Amen. And I'm, I'm excited today because I got somebody that came back to me this week. Amen. Oh, last week, praise God, my beautiful wife was gone out of town. But glory to God, she is back. Amen. And, and, and speaking of fear, I was wondering when she left last Sunday, what am I going to do with me and the church? Amen. Because you had them thoughts go through your head. <sighs> what are we going to eat? Are we going to get to school on time? Who going to do their homework? All kind of stuff. But guess what? God saw us through, baby. No fear here. Amen. We faced every challenge we had, and we had some challenges. Amen. But God brought us through each and every challenge. Amen. So open up your Bibles. Open up your Bibles today. And we're going to start our text scripture today. It's 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. And the word of the Lord says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Hallelujah. So God has not given us this thing called fear. That did not come from God because God didn't give it to us. Amen. God gave us a spirit of power. Praise God. So no matter what we're, we're faced with, what we're going through, and people are fearful, or sometimes just say people, we can personalize it. Sometimes we get fearful of a lot of different things. Amen? Just thinking of some of the things people are fearful of. Uh, uh, right now, there's a big thing going on right now that people are kind of fearful of. And what is it? The virus. Amen. But, but one thing I found out, it seemed like every so often, there's another virus. We had the swine flu. We had the West Nile. We had, oh, now here was the big one, Ebola. Yeah. Ebola's going to wipe out the whole planet. But guess what? We still here. Amen. So when we look at this thing called Corona, whatever it's called, we know we there is no need to what? Fear, amen, because God didn't give us that fear. Sometimes, I know some guys now, I'm just talking to guys, some guys are fearful of doing this right here. <laughs> Baby, will you? Now, I don't know why. Sometimes guys get nervous, and they get fearful of doing it, amen? Sometimes we get fearful of opportunities. 
Amen. Sometimes there's opportunities that come my way, but we get fearful of them. I don't know if I'm qualified for this opportunity. I don't know. Go for it. Go for it. You never know until you try. Amen. Sometimes people, we get stuck on jobs that we do not like. But there's an opportunity for something greater, but what holds us back? Fear. But God said, I didn't give you that spirit. Amen? I gave you a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. And when these things come to your mind, you have to cast it down. Praise God. Let's go to, to Psalms 23. Amen? Psalms 23. And let's talk about we have no need to fear. Tell your neighbor, say, look, you ain't got no need to fear. Because believe it or not, at any given moment, there's something going through our minds. Amen? There's something always trying to tell us, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't. And it's a spirit, amen? But look at Psalms 23. We're going to read Psalms 23, verses 1 through 4. It said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the what? Still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And David said this, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. And I thought about that. If you start seeing shadows, it's something there. It ain't going to be no shadow if there ain't nothing there. I can remember back, back in the day, we used to play hide and go seek. And somebody be hiding behind a tree like, boy, I see you. I, you know, I see a big old shadow right there. I know exactly where you at. Amen? But David said, yeah, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, even though I know that danger is present. But he said what? What's the next thing he said? He said, I will fear no evil. Praise God. Though I'm walking through it. Though I'm in the midst of it, I ain't fearing nothing. Why? Why? Here's an important reason why. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they shall comfort me. Amen? So I took note of that. That yeah, though he walked through it, he didn't say he ran from it. He didn't say he going to go an alternate route. I'm walking straight through it. Let's go. You got to have that confidence. I heard one man say, you got to have that dog in you. What do you mean by that dog? There it is. <laughs> All right. Let's go to Psalms 91. Praise God. Turn to Psalms 91. I'm trying to build up your confidence. I'm trying to build up your faith to show you that we don't have no need to fear. We don't have no need to fear no matter what it may be, how big it may be. This was the shadow of death. I ain't, I ain't fearing nothing because I know God is with me. Psalms 91 says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord that He is my refuge. I will say, personalize it. You will say, say what? He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the hand, from the snare of the fowler, from the northman pestilence, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Praise God. Praise God. Let's keep reading. He said, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terrors by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. I don't care if it's in the daytime, in the nighttime, I don't care what time it is, I ain't going to be afraid. Praise God. He said, for, for the, the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday, a thousand may fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but what? It shall not come near thee. Praise God. We have no need to fear when we put our trust in God. Amen? Amen. Turn one more. Let's look at Psalms 27. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Psalms 27. Let's turn to that real quick. I hope you're taking notes because 
these thoughts come to you, amen? amen? The stuff that you flipping on the channels be going through your head, but you got to overpower that with the word of God, amen? amen. So look at Psalms 27. Say amen when you get there. Amen. Said the Lord is my light and my salvation. And then he asked a question. Who shall I fear? Did you hear what I said? I said that the Lord, <laughs> you must have heard what I said. The Lord is my life and my salvation. I can remember back in the day in the neighborhood, y'all always had that one guy that was just good at everything. And we used to play this pickup game. You used to have to, have to shoot for who get first pick. And as long as you got such and such on your team, it don't matter. Did, did you hear what I said? What's, oh, Jim Bob on our team. I'm just giving that. Oh, Jim Bob on our team. Oh, you must have hit me. We good. Amen. And so when we know that God is on our side, we good. <laughs> we good. We ain't got nothing to worry about. Amen. He said, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Who shall I fear? And who shall I be afraid of? When God is on my side, I have no need to fear. Praise God. He said, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came up against me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Thou hast, thou host, thou, 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 thou and host uh, and camp against me, my heart shall not fear. In your heart. Because sometimes we go places and we try to face it, but in your heart, you still kind of shaky. Amen. But he said, my heart, in my heart of hearts, I'm not going to be afraid. Amen? Amen. The war shall arise against me. In this will I be confident. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. Praise God. So we don't have no need to fear. Who shall we fear? Who shall we be afraid of? What shall we be afraid of? Nothing. Look to your neighbor again and say, no fear here. There's no fear here. Let's look at one more under that. Isaiah 41. Let's go to Isaiah 41. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Out of the mouth of faith. Say it up front, all right? Psalm 41. That baby ain't got no fear. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Psalms 40, I mean, uh, Isaiah 41. Let's go to uh, verse 10. Let's go to verse 10. All right, so I was looking at this. It started out with what? Uh, uh, first of all, is everybody there? All right, we got it right up here on the screen. Amen, if you want to look up. All right, so Isaiah 41, verse 10. And the word of the Lord says, fear thou not. Why should I not fear? For I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Praise God. So God, listen, this ain't, this ain't me up here talking. This is the word of God telling us to fear not. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I ain't looking for nobody else but God. Amen. He said, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. This is the word of God telling you, don't fear. I'm going to help you. Glory to God. Verse 11 says, Behold, all they that were in, in cease against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. Glory to God. They shall be as nothing. And when, when, you, when you're looking at that scripture, go back and study and put whatever that thing is and say, that shall be as nothing. Praise God. It shall be as nothing. Praise God. Uh, verse 12 and said, they that, that strive with thee shall perish. Verse 12 says, thou shalt seek them, and you ain't going to even find them. Even them that contended with thee, they, and they that warred against you, they shall be as what? Nothing. And as a thing of naught. Of naught. Of naught. 
That's a new one. Nah. That's that slang right there. Did you say nothing? No, I said nah. Yeah, it's getting right there. Nah. All right, verse 13 says, For I am, for, for I the Lord thy God will uphold thee with my right hand, saying unto thee, he said it again. If God repeats something, it must be important. He's telling you once again to do what? Fear not. Glory to God. For I will help thee. As I said before, we have no need to fear. God has told you more than once, fear not, I'm going to help you. But my light be a fear not, I'm going to help you. But they about to come get my truck. Fear not, because I'm going to help you. Oh God, what am I going to do? My wife didn't let me go to Arizona. Fear not, I'm going to help you with them kids. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, I want to shift. There's a, I got three points. Number one was, we have no need to fear. And I gave you scriptures to show you that we have no need to fear. When God tells you, fear not, I'm going to help you. I'm with you. Every, everything and everyone that come against you is going to be as nothing. That should just make you just... <sighs> Man. See, I, I played high school football. I'm not saying I was, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I was a linebacker. And you can compare me to people like, you know, Ray Lewis, uh, what, did I say something wrong? Mike Singletary, you know, you, just, you can compare me to one of those, but I played linebacker. But as I, as I, as I was on the field, sometimes you will go up against an opponent and you've heard so much about that opponent. And honestly, sometimes it would affect how you play. Now, if you just playing some old rinky dink team, oh, you fired up for that. But then when there's a challenge, a lot of times we, I don't know. I don't know. But I, one thing I had to learn is that you just got to play hard no matter what the situation. And that's the same thing we got to do in life. Is we got to play hard no matter what the situation. Amen. Because now we know through the word of God, I'm going to help you. You just going out there. Don't worry about that. I'm right behind you. I'm right there with you. Praise God. So, number one, I want you to, to remember is that we have no need to fear. Number two is that this is what I want us to understand this. Don't let fear drive you. Let your faith in the Lord guide you. Amen. Don't let fear drive you to do something. Sometimes we do some crazy stuff. You know, why you do that? Man, I'm scared. Yeah. You, you get, well, the, the truck started rolling, so I jumped off. You jumped off? What, what you doing? You just hang on. Praise God. Don't let that fear drive you, but let your faith in the Lord guide you. Let's turn to Romans chapter 10. Amen? Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 10. No fear here. Praise the Lord. So look at Romans. Praise God. Romans chapter 10. Let's look at Romans chapter 10. And we'll, we'll go over there to verse 17. Verse 17. And this is something I had to realize and understand in my life. Amen. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It says, hey, say amen when you get there. Amen. 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 Praise God. It says, so then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the what? Word. The word of God. Amen. So I said, hmm, faith comes by hearing. But you know what else I found out? Fear comes by hearing also. Amen. Fear comes by hearing. Now we didn't know what was going on over in China until we started seeing it on everything. Every news station you turned on. All the economy going down. Uh, banks is going to be in trouble. Business is going to close. And you hear that. And then that recorder, that video start playing in your head. Oh, man, I might lose my job. Then you start seeing them come put padlocks on your house. You start seeing all this stuff. But guess what? That ain't real. That is not real, praise God. Faith comes by hearing. So if faith comes by hearing and fear comes by hearing, I better make sure I start hearing the right thing. Amen? Because what you hear the most is what's going to start to take over. Amen? Because what you hear, eventually you're going to start to 
act on it. Now you start saying, okay, they're going to come take this. Now, well, shoot, I might not even gonna go to work today. What? You going to stop living? Come, come on, you going to stop living? Well, they said they done spread it over here to my, my town. I'm just going to stay in the house. You gonna stay in the house? We can't listen. One thing I found out about fear, it will paralyze you. Fear will absolutely paralyze you. It will stop you dead in your tracks. <laughs> I can remember, baby, please forgive me. But back in high school, because I've been knowing my wife, we've been, been together since ninth grade. So we've been together for a while. And I'll never forget this. Her senior year, she had been wanting to get on the drill team. Y'all know. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the drill team, you do a little kick. Y'all know what I'm talking about, she wanted to be on the drill team, all right? So she prepared, she practiced, right? My baby, she, she can kick now, don't get me wrong. She can kick. But anyway, so they got information, and she had pumped herself up. She was going to do it. <laughs> and so she got ready to try out, and she started, and somebody moved, and she saw the judges, and one of them smiled. And mid-kick, she just, <laughs> she just stopped. When I say stop, she stopped. Everybody else dancing, she says, why she stopped? Fear. Matter of fact, after it was over, one of the judges came up to her and said, you was doing good. Why did you stop? Why did you stop? That fear. And what I'm saying with us sometimes in our life, we on the right track. We're doing good. Don't stop. Because when you start having that play in your head, it will cause you to freeze up. And when you freeze up, it's going to keep passing you by. And now, those things that you start to see, it, it may actually start to happen. Why? Because you acted on it. But now on the flip side, woo, flip that coin over. All right? It's two, two sides of every coin. You got the coin of faith, and you got the coin of fear. So flip that thing over. All right? We used to play a little game back in middle school called Get Like Me. Who said that over there? Uh-huh. See, I got some people that say, uh, I got Get my ISS on it. <laughs> I used to get you a plan get like me, all right? But you got to get, get like me. You got to be in faith. Because if you believe God and you start acting on it, guess what? You're going to see it. Amen? Praise God. All right, let's turn, let's turn to the next scripture here. Let's go to Mark. Now, I want to give you this situation here in Mark. This is Jesus in, in, in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 5. And I just want to give you an example praise God, of someone that acts in faith. Amen? When there's a big opportunity to walk in fear. Praise God. Now, so let's go to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Listen, we have no need to fear. Even back in Exodus, y'all remember they put the blood over the post and the, and the death angel passed over all the people of God? That was the blood of sheep or goat. But we got the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. We covered by the blood of Jesus. We have no need to fear. Praise God. But look at Mark. Let's look at Mark real quick. And we're going to read several scriptures in, in, in Mark. We're going to start at verse 25. All right. And this is a familiar story. The woman with the issue of blood. All right, the one with the issue of blood. But there's some certain, certain things I pointed out when I thought about fear because she had reason to be in fear. Because her with that condition, you're supposed to stay over here. Why? Because you don't want to get nobody else contaminated, so to speak. Amen? Sounds for me. Uh-huh. But anyway, so this woman with the issue of blood said a certain woman which, which had an issue of blood, how long? 12 years, and she had suffered many things of many physicians and spent all that she had and was nothing better, but it got what? Worse. And when she heard, she heard something. She heard something. Faith comes by hearing something. Now, now, come by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. So the woman with the issue of blood, she heard something. What did she hear? It says uh, right here in uh, 27, it said, when she heard of Jesus, she came into the press behind him and she touched his garment. As I mentioned, what you hear, you will act on it. All right? Her faith caused her to do something. 
Faith is action. Fear will cause you to freeze up. Faith will cause you to go get it. Just go get it. That's what faith will do. Faith will cause you to just go get it. You act on it. Look, I know I ain't supposed to be out here, but I'm about to go get some because I heard about this man named Jesus. Amen. So don't let your fear hold you back. Let your faith guide you. Amen. It said, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was what? Dried, Dried up. And I can imagine when she was pressing, that's all she was thinking about. This thing is going to leave. Listen to me now. Listen to me. The what she was playing over in her head, she could see it. When I get out there, I'm going to touch her, and it's going to get better. That's what she, she kept saying to herself. Like I say, on the flip side of faith, people say, well, I can't do this. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. And eventually, guess what? That happened. But on the flip side of faith, you've seen her in action. If I can just get out there, she said she heard it, and then she said, glory to God. She heard it, internalized it, and she regurgitated that thing back up. And when she regurgitated that thing back up, she went out there and got exactly what she wanted. Because her faith pushed her. She didn't listen to other folks telling her, you need to just, just stay right here, baby. It's going to be all right. We're going to keep you comfortable as you leave here. Man, you crazy. I'm going to go get my blessing. You crazy? You think I'm just going to sit here? Get, get away from me with all that negative talk. Tell myself, it's okay. We're going to make you comfortable. You, you want something else? No, I want to go get to Jesus and get my healing. Amen. Don't let nobody hold you back. Just because they ain't in faith don't mean you ain't got to be in faith. You got to watch who, who you listen to also. Praise God. All right, so she went out there and got her healing. Amen. And so right down here, I can flip the page. Praise God. There's a wind of the Holy Spirit. All right. All right. All right. So back here in chapter 5. All right. So he said, And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And it said that Jesus was, was going through the disciples, was by him, and he said, Somebody touched me. They're like, Man, what you mean? Somebody touched you. He said, No, no, I know somebody touched me. And then 33. Go to, chapter, go to verse 33. He said, But the woman, fear and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And this is what Jesus told her. He said, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. And it's a perfect example of letting your faith guide you. Her faith guided her through that crowd. And man, you can imagine Listen, she's been dealing with this for 12 years. Can you imagine how weak she was? And all them folks, you just imagine you at a Jackson State game and you trying to get to the head coach. Come on, man. That's almost impossible. But her faith said, she saw it. Listen to me, she saw it. She said, I got to get there. I already seen it. Listen, everything that you got right now, you probably seen it. Am I right? You are where you are right now because of your thoughts. Do y'all believe that? You are right now where you are because of what you believe God for. If you believe God for this, guess what? You're going to get it. You believe God for that, guess what? You're going to get it. But if you believe God for this, up here, you going to get it. Praise God. All right, but, but, but during this whole time, before this woman even came into the picture, a man said, listen, Jesus, my daughter, she about to die. Can you follow me to the house so you can heal her? So in the midst of that, this woman came and all that happened. And then let's look down here in 35. It said, while he had spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, which said, thy daughter is, I'm verse 35, thy daughter is what? Dead. Why trouble the master any further? Oh, boy. He just heard something. Oh, boy. Daughter dead. And since when I read the Bible, I try to personalize it. All right, because if you don't, you just think it's just a story. You just, uh, but this really happened. Praise God. This man's daughter was dead. So this is what he just heard. Golly, listen to me. This is what he just heard now. But what did Jesus do as soon as he heard that? Jesus, look, verse 36. Jesus said, it said, as soon as Jesus heard the words that were spoken, he did what? He said something. Oh, you got to get this key point right here. 
is that when you hear something negative like that, immediately you got to replace that. And Jesus knew that. He knew this man just heard that before that fear started to sink in. Jesus said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. let me tell you something. All right, this is what Jesus said. This is what Jesus said. He said, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Oh, listen to me. Y'all got to get this point. Is that when you hear something, immediately you got to replace that. You got to replace that. It looks bad. This is going to happen. Bro, keep that over there. I believe the word of the Lord. You start quoting the scriptures. God is with me. God going to help me. It don't matter what it looks like. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm only moved by the word of God. Amen? Now, this was real stuff that happened. His daughter really died. But as soon as he heard it, Jesus had to speak something different. And that's an example for us that once you hear it, you better start speaking something different. Amen? Whatever that thing going on in your life right now, you hear it, immediately go on switch to something different. Praise God. All right, so let's keep this train moving real quick. All right, so let's look at Luke. Luke chapter 8, verse 50. Luke chapter 8, verse 50. And it just said it uh, just a little bit different than what we, the way we just heard it in Mark. But at verse 50, this is what how Jesus told him. He said, but when Jesus heard it, he answered him. He gave a reply back. He answered that thing back. Amen. And he said, fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Now, here's another point I want to bring up because in the story, when Jesus got ready to go in, he didn't bring everybody in with him. Listen to me. If you're going to walk in faith, if you're going to believe God, everybody ain't going to be able to come in there with you. Because you're going to have some people that's going to look at you. Man, that look bad. Man, my cousin, he had the same thing. And they had to cut his leg off. You start hearing that, you start thinking, oh, man. There ain't no cure for it and this and that. And, and when you start hearing it, you better not start saying it. Amen. Well, I got this and they, they said ain't no cure, but we're going to just manage it. We serve a God that can destroy it. But we got to just live with it and manage it. Manage what? Didn't God say I'll be with you? It'll be as nothing. <sighs> that woman had an issue of blood went everywhere. It wasn't no cure. It wasn't no cure. But her faith made her whole. What I'm saying to you right now, Facebook Live, that no matter what it is, God can make you whole. Praise God. Praise God. So, we said we have no need to fear. We're not going to let our faith drive us. We're going to let the word of God guide us. Amen. And now the last thing, the last point I want to bring up that we must do, that we must do. And this is something I got from a group. As a group of us, we used to, we used to hang tight. We used to, we used to do different things together. But it was FTF. And you wonder, what does FTF stand for? You got to fight to focus. Listen to me. You got to fight to stay focused. Because it, it all starts right here in your mind. And you got to fight to stay focused on the word of God. You got to fight to stay positive. You got to fight to stay in good spirits. Because if not, that stuff will try to overtake you. It's like a spirit of depression will try to come over you. And that's one thing fear will try to do. Fear will bring on depression and anxiety. And all of it is just movies that are being played in your head. Amen. But we got to fight to stay focused. Amen. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Praise God. Say amen when you get there. We just talking about no fear here. We, we ain't got no fear. What is that? Praise God. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. And verse 12 says, amen, when you get there. He said, verse 12 said, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold 
on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called, and thou hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. You got to fight this good fight of faith. And it is a fight. When I say it is a fight, it is a fight. It seems like everything trying to get stacked against you. Everywhere you turn, everything you flip on the TV, you turn on the radio, put on social media, that negativity is right there, always present. But you got to fight to stay focused on what you heard in the Word of God. Amen. You got to stay, stay, stay confident in the confession that you made. Because if you ain't careful, the enemy try to make you take it back. Huh? Oh, I'm trusting God. I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be set. I'm going to be debt free. And then something happened. Uh-huh. What you going to do now? I'm, I'm still going to be healed. I'm still going to be free. I'm still going to be delivered. You ain't making me change what I said. You got to keep saying it. If you keep saying it, you going to see it. Just don't stop saying it. Because when you stop saying it, you leave a window open for that video to start that plan. Everybody got me on that? You got to fight to focus. The things that you believe in God for, stay focused on it. You got to keep your focus. What they say about Peter? They say Peter was looking at Jesus and then he lost his focus. Tweet her. Well, no, no. Keep your focus. Keep your focus. Because if you don't keep your focus, you will start to sink. Amen. You keep, I, no, this is what I want. This one, No, I don't want that color. I said I want this color. Because, oh, don't, don't think they ain't going to try to offer you something you don't want. Now, I'm not saying that. I'm just thinking in general, in life. Life will try to present you with something that you do not want. And you better not settle. Because I believe in God for this. And I'm not going to settle for that. The enemy try to make us settle. The enemy comes to do what? But Jesus said, I come to bring life. And that more abundantly. We can't settle for less than more abundantly. Amen? If God said it, then we gonna see it. Praise God. Now, here's the key. Here's the key right here. Let's go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. Praise God. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. No fear here. Look at your name and tell them. No fear here. The more you hear the word of God, the more it builds up your faith. more it builds up your confidence. Amen? All right, but 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. Let's look at it. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. Say amen when you get there. It says, there is no fear in love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love does what? It casts out fear. You got to get that fear out, but perfect love is going to cast out that fear. Let's keep reading. It says, "He, uh, but be because fear has what? Torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Now, when we think about perfect love cast out fear, let's think about the love of God. The love of God. When we really get a revelation of how much God loves us. Glory to God. When we realize what God did for us by sending his son. Giving up his only begotten son for each and every one of us. That's how much he loved us. Praise God. He loved us so much that he gave us his all. And do you really think he gave you all that just to let the devil overtake you? When you get a revelation of how much love God has for you, whatever fear is in there, it got to flee. <laughs> we just got to stay in faith. We got to keep reading his word and give God back his word. Amen. Give God back his word. I'm just thinking about Daniel. Daniel was praying. When the angel came and said, Daniel, we heard you the first time. Amen. And listen, you got to give him back his word. I'm just thinking about my daughter. My daughter six years old. One thing about them, them, them daughters, if daddy say it, daddy, you better do it. I don't care how tired I am, how late I get home. Daddy, you said that we were going to go to Walmart. She ain't looking at the time, the situation, payday ain't came. 
came yet. It don't matter. You said we going to Walmart. You going to get me some slime, Daddy. And I bet right now she be in the back playing with her slime. Because Daddy had to go get that slime. What am I saying? Her faith in Daddy. She know Daddy love her. And she know Daddy said it. And if Daddy said it, he going to do it. Why, why are we not like that with our Heavenly Father? If God said in his word, don't worry about what it looked like. Don't worry about the situation. Don't worry about how many folks came up against you. It can be the whole wild word against you. God, you said, if I believe, I receive. So God, I believe you're going to do it. And guess what? He's going to do it. Why? Because he loves us. That perfect love from God. God's love is perfect. One scripture said that God is love. So when you get a revelation of how much God loves you, all fear that you have, I ain't worried about that. Why? Because my father loves me. Amen. Let's look at one more scripture. Let's get ready to bring it on home. One more scripture. Let's look at Isaiah 26. As we bring it on home, Isaiah 26. Very, very important scripture. All these scriptures are important. And the whole purpose of today is just to relax your mind. And everything is going to be all right. No matter what the situation, what it, what it looked like on your job. Because a lot of things are affecting jobs. But God said it ain't going to affect you. You ain't got to worry about that. It may affect 10,000 folks. But it ain't going to come near you. Praise God. So Isaiah, say everybody say man when you get there. Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26, and this is what we have to do. Praise God. This is what we must do. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Verse 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Glory to God. He'll keep thee in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because. He trusts in thee. Now listen, when we talk about the mind, we got to keep our mind stayed on Jesus. We got to keep our mind stayed on God. Our peace, sometimes we lay up at night. I don't know if y'all ever been there, but I'm going to be honest. Praise God. Sometimes you lay up at night. You, just, you went to bed early and woke up still tired. Why? Because your mind ain't stopped yet. The mind is always trying to figure it out, trying to play it out. If I put this together, subtract the one, divide it by three, I think it can happen. And then you wake up just as tired like you ain't even went to sleep. Why? Because our mind is so focused on the problem. But what I'm telling us today is God will keep you in perfect peace if you just keep your mind on me. And one thing I know about stress, stress will make you sick. Stress will affect your health. Stress will affect your life. Stress will affect your relationships. Glory to God. But when you can keep your mind on Jesus, glory to God. When you keep your mind on the word, when you keep the scriptures in your heart, God said, I keep you in perfect peace. Why? Because you ain't worried about it. Praise God. Worry and stress go hand in hand. But the power of God can destroy that. Amen? Yeah. Glory to God. The opportunities that are before you. Man, listen, 2020 is bringing so many opportunities. Yeah. I'm talking about, it's people I talk to, they, you making how much? A month? Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh man, there's opportunities out here. Yeah. But if you listen to what the media is telling you, oh, uh, everything done crash. Yeah. Praise God. But if you, you can't be afraid to take that chance. Amen. The woman with the issue of blood. I know it's rough out there. They can do this and do that. They can stone me the whole nine yards. But you know what? Ain't nothing going to happen if I stay here. Just listen to what I'm saying now. Your present situation. Is something, something good going to come from you just staying there? No, it's time to let's go. Trust God. As you start walking, the steps of a good man is what? Go this way. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Lord. Go this way. He will guide you every move. We're not moved by what we see, but we move by the word of God. God will guide you every step. You just walk. Mary Mary said, I'm walking up. Don't worry about it. 
Don't need to worry about it. Praise God. But listen, as we get ready to end this message, I want you to understand that we have no need to fear. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, no fear here. No fear here. God will. doing all this and all this I just need to stay in the word yeah. keep listening to the word yeah. turn your car into a word station yeah. if you got your iPhone you can bluetooth it you can put the, the, the cord in there play it, and you just listen to that word and now is the time because there's so much opportunity and anytime there's opportunity there's going to be opposition yeah. listen the higher you go up the more things going to try to pull you back so it's best that we stay before the word of God. We come to church every time church is happening. Why? Because we got to get that word in us so we can go to the top. Praise God. But we cannot get there with fear. So as we wrap it up, just remember, we have no need to fear. Don't let your fear drive you, but let your faith in the Lord guide you. And most importantly, you got to fight to focus. Fight to focus. Fight. Man, I just remember back in the day, people try to, well, I can't sound like that word, but they try to, I think I heard pastor say it. I mean, they try to pump you out. They're just as simple as that. All right? And one thing I used to always find out, people try to look at you and they do this move right here. If you scared, he's going to flinch. You try to act all tough, they jump. Oh, I'm sorry. And see, that's what the enemy tried to do. He can't, you know he can't do nothing. But what he can do is put it out there. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. And if you catch hold of that, he'll suck you in. But we ain't catching hold to nothing but the word of God. Praise God. And it's time we're going to turn to the hands of Mr. Lord. Praise God.
you miss God along the way. Amen. So uh, that's applicable to all of us. We've all missed God. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you're here to 